So the basic testing that we're used to, if we're dealing with simple outputs, strings, arrays, integers, or values that we know the result, this strategy works of providing already like an expected output in the test. For example, if we're testing the conversion from USD to dollars, like we have a currency exchanger, <laughs> you pass to it $100. You say that the conversion rate is 0 0.7 for the day. You would expect 70 pounds back, right? So now this is simple. You input is $100, conversion rate 0 0.7, you expect the output to be 70. Right, that's a simple test. You can create this assertion because you know what you expect. It's very simple. The expectation, like you have examples. So tests are examples that will prove that your system does what you expect, right? So you, when it's easy to create an example, it's easy to create an assertion. But when dealing with output that is not easy to predict, like you don't know what the output will be, right? Some complex object with a bunch of attributes or it's an image, or it's a binary. Then it's hard to provide a, an expected output upfront. Like if you can, you can create an assertion. Otherwise, when we're dealing with this hard to predict output, which are more rare cases, but it happens, then we need different strategies. One of them is snapshot tests, right? In the program you saw there. Are you already in the UI module, main module? Yeah, just finished it this week, so. Yeah. Oh, so you saw a snapshot test there, right? Yeah. So this is one strategy you can do. For example, if your output is an image, you can, where is it? You can store this image in the test where you generate the image. You check if it's okay and you commit it, you store it. So when you run the test again, you will regenerate the image and compare with the stored one. If they are the same, it means that it's still generating the output you expect, right? Okay. So it's a bit different because when you're dealing with snapshot tests, you don't provide the image first as an expectation. You take images until you are happy with the output and now they become a sample that you store in your code base. So the next time you run the test, you will assert that it's still generating that expected result. So instead of you providing the result upfront, you will be running, your, you'll be generating snapshots until you're happy with it, until you approve that snapshot as Okay, this snapshot is how I want the output to be. Okay. So take the snapshot. There could be a, an image. It could be a text file as well. It doesn't need to actually be an image. Right? Another way you can get an, a snapshot of a, an object, for example, is this. This is a snapshot of an object, right? <laughs> but in text form. As long as it's, if it's a stable, um, representation of this object, you could even have an assertion like this. For example, right? Mm, you can then parse it somehow and stuff, yeah. Yeah. Now, this is not a stable representation of this object because it has pointers. And every yeah. time you run this, the pointer address will be different, right? <laughs> yeah. So there are libraries out there that will create a snapshot of this description of the object and remove the pointers like this, then it's stable. So you can take a snapshot of an object, not just actually a PNG or a JPEG. It's actually a, any kind of representation that makes sense for their object. Like, so here that, that could be a snapshot of it, right? And you can store this text file. And when you run the test again, you will regenerate this string representation of the object, this is snapshot, and compare with what you have stored. So snapshot test is not only images, but it can also be like this var dump, right? <laughs> the description of the object. And again, you will not provide this upfront and implement your code until you get here. Actually, you'll be looking at the snapshot 
yeah. until it's a snapshot that you're happy with. And that's the difference when dealing with snapshot tests and or writing normal like unit tests. When writing unit tests, you know what you expect and you create that assertion first and then you implement your code until you achieve that output. But here's a bit different. You keep generating snapshots until you're happy with the result of the snapshot and then you store it and you save it. Okay. So you generate a snapshot and say, oh, I don't like it. I don't think this color should be this color. I think it should be blue. Then you tweak the code, take a new snapshot, you look at it. Okay, now it's blue the way I want, but I want this to be red and then you change. Now I'm happy. That's exactly the snapshot I want. Now I have a good example of what I want. You want this to be like a short cycle, right? You want it to use some kind of framework that will help you generate this in snapshots. Do I create one? Or oh, there are a bunch of out there for snapshot tests. Okay, and should should I use the same, let's say, uh, assertion for snapshots that uh, iOS uses, like we did in the UI module, or should I use something else for comparison? Yeah, it depends. You mean using images or text, for example? Yeah, let's say, so if the, I want to compare images, it's going to be snapshot tests. If I want to compare an attributed string, what should I use or not all types are comparable, let's say. Since your output here is an image, I think it would be best for you to be comparing the images, right? Especially because it's simpler for you to verify if the output is correct by looking at an image than by looking at this, right? This requires some time for your eyes to adjust and see like RGB, what is 091? What is 02 and 054? Like if I get this combination of RGB and alpha channel is one, like your brain doesn't know what it is unless you are very familiar with RGB and some people can look at this and imagine like, oh, okay, this is a, a green color. <laughs> I cannot, right? So I'd rather see an image. So whatever will be easier for you to verify the snapshot. Okay. So whatever is easy and also depending, like if you have many snapshots, maybe now you have, um, like a large amount of data. Like maybe it's, you're gonna have a very heavy repository with gigabytes of data and that may not be great. So you need to op start optimizing. You know, if it's just a few images and they are small, then that's fine. Now there's another problem we can have with images. Every time you take a snapshot with a different simulator or every time there's a new simulator, it may generate slightly different results because they updated the, algorithm for the anti-aliasing in the when rendering a font. <laughs> yeah, can it happen. And yeah. there will be things that you cannot tell there is a difference if you look at the two images, but the computer can because it's comparing the bitmap like every pixel, every point. And even if you take a snapshot on Intel machine or an M1 machine and you compare them, there'll be slight differences as well or depending on the color scheme of the monitor or depending on so many mm -hmm. variables, it can generate different results. Now, but there are strategies to deal with this as well. For example, you can use a snapshot comparison algorithm that will have a, a small tolerance for tiny differences. So when you're using a snapshot library, you can find a bunch of there. They, you will find that they prov you can pass like a tolerance, like 99%, it needs to be 99% the same or 99.9%, .9%. it's not 100%. If there is like 0.1% difference, in, it's acceptable. So then you can bypass those slight, like small changes that comes from a different simulator or a different color scheme and so on. Right, so there are strategies to deal with that. So we use snapshot libraries or snapshot tests when you're dealing with these complex outputs, but I wouldn't recommend relying only on snapshot tests. Your unit tests is still is your primary strategy for testing logic, right? Because it's much faster. It's simpler to deal with when there is a mistake. It's simpler to, to fix, to find a mistake. 
snapshot test when it fails you need to open a snapshot and compare it you know it's like the game uh, find seven mistakes in these two pictures like seven differences <laughs> yeah